Welcome to Harmony Unveiled, a mesmerizing tale of love, passion, and the complexities of the human heart. If you're enjoying this captivating story, please subscribe to our channel for more enthralling content. Main characters of the story are Isaac Rasmussen, a talented and enigmatic actor. Isaac is torn between his deep connection with Skittery and the magnetic pull he feels towards Evelyn. His journey explores the complexities of love and desire. Skittery, a passionate and dedicated performer, Skittery finds himself deeply in love with Isaac. He navigates the challenges of an unconventional romance with grace and understanding. Evelyn, a brilliant actress known for her enigmatic roles, Evelyn forms a unique bond with both Isaac and Skittery. Her wisdom and grace guide the trio as they confront the complexities of their feelings. Join us on this remarkable journey as we delve into the intricacies of love, desire, and the enduring power of genuine human connection. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more chapters of Harmony Unveiled. Now let's begin the story. Once upon a time, in the bustling halls of a high school, there was a young man named Skittery Jameson. He carried the usual contents of a student's pockets, two pencils, a pen, a cell phone charger, and a cell phone. Life was ordinary for Skittery, but little did he know that his world was about to be transformed by an unexpected encounter. One ordinary day, as Skittery navigated the maze of lockers and classrooms, he found himself pausing in the hallway. His attention was irresistibly drawn to a new arrival, a captivating figure who stood out in the sea of students. It was love at first sight for him. The object of Skittery's affection was a young woman of medium height with short curly brown hair, chocolate brown eyes and tan skin. She clutched her books to her chest, her nervousness palpable, and yet she exuded an undeniable charm. Skittery's friend, Jack Kelly, couldn't help but notice the sudden shift in his demeanor. Jack, who had lived in Gallup on the Navajo reservation until four years ago, recognized the girl's Navajo heritage. He wasted no time in approaching her, even as Skittery's other friend, David, murmured under his breath with a hint of jealousy. Is that who I think it is? Jack asked, and the girl, startled by his approach, turned to face him. Her eyes widened in surprise and fear as he called her name, Snitch Rasmussen? She nodded hesitantly, and then recognition lit up her eyes. Jack, Jackie boy, is that you? Jack enveloped her in a warm hug, and the two old friends reunited their laughter filling the hallway. Skittery couldn't help but wonder what this reunion meant for Jack's relationship with David. Their English teacher, Mr. Denton, eventually entered the classroom, calling for order. As Snitch took her seat next to Skittery, he found himself feeling both excited and distracted, caught between his fascination with the girl and his awareness of his own identity. Class progressed, but Skittery's mind kept wandering from the lesson. He couldn't help but think, wow, she's beautiful. Then a conflicting thought would arise, wait, aren't I gay? After class, as Snitch prepared to leave, Skittery mustered the courage to speak up. What class do you have next? We have a study period, and if you do too, we can show you around. Snitch smiled warmly, but there was a hint of nervousness in her eyes. Jack, always the friendly one, stood up and spoke to her in Navajo, to which Snitch replied in kind. Skittery couldn't understand the conversation, but it seemed to amuse Jack immensely. Okay, class, Mr. Denton said, gaining everyone's attention. Snitch's presence had added an intriguing twist to an otherwise ordinary day. The adventure was just beginning, and Skittery couldn't wait to see where it would lead. As the story unfolds, we find ourselves drawn deeper into the lives of Skittery, Jack, David, and the enigmatic newcomer, Snitch. Their high school days are turning out to be far from ordinary. After a brief conversation in private, Jack and Snitch rejoined the group. Skittery couldn't help but be intrigued by the mysterious exchange that had taken place between them earlier. What was the dare Snitch had mentioned? Why did she switch between a feminine and masculine voice? As they continued chatting, Skittery's curiosity got the better of him, and he decided to discreetly follow Jack and Snitch when they walked away from the group. What he overheard left him even more perplexed. It seemed that Snitch was embarking on some sort of challenge involving hitting on both straight and gay guys. The mystery surrounding her deepened. When they returned to the group, Snitch appeared more at ease, and her companions bombarded her with questions. Skittery, however, couldn't help but wonder about the nature of Snitch's dare and what motivated her to take it on. Their conversation continued, and Snitch revealed that her next class was math, 
a subject she didn't particularly enjoy. Skittery, ever the helpful friend, offered to show her the way to her next class. Meanwhile, Jack and David seemed to have smoothed things over. However, a new character entered the scene in the form of Kyle Kay, the school's popular guy. He couldn't resist approaching Snitch, complimenting her on her beauty and suggesting they should be together. Snitch, unimpressed, responded with a fiery determination that left everyone astonished. As tensions rose, Skittery noticed a change in Snitch's demeanor. She called upon Jack for support, and he provided it, speaking to her in Navajo. This language switch only added to the intrigue. Eventually, Kyle retreated, chastened by Snitch's powerful words. The group, still somewhat shocked, continued their interaction with Snitch, who explained that her intent was to tone down her actions because they were making David jealous, and Jack genuinely happy with David. As the school bell signaled the end of the period, Skittery offered to show Snitch the way to her next class. Meanwhile, Jack and David caught up with them, and Snitch's genuine happiness for the couple became evident. But then a revelation dropped. David now knew something about Snitch, something that had caused her to react dramatically. Skittery couldn't help but feel a growing sense of curiosity about the secrets that seemed to surround Snitch's identity. As the days passed, Skittery found himself growing closer to Snitch, and surprisingly, developed a crush on her. It was a revelation that both surprised and confused him, given that he had always identified as gay. He confided in Jack, who encouraged him to ask Snitch out, believing that she had been turning down other guys because she was waiting for Skittery. With Jack's encouragement, Skittery mustered the courage to ask Snitch out. Her response, however, was unexpected. She declined, apologizing and mentioning that she knew a boy who would be willing to go out with him. Skittery's heart sank, but he agreed to meet this mysterious boy. They set up a date in front of Skittery's favorite restaurant, Sushi Ya, at 7 o'clock. Skittery arrived on time, feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. When a polite voice greeted him, he turned to see a handsome young man in a light green shirt and black slacks. Skittery couldn't help but compliment the boy's appearance, and the feeling was mutual. The boy introduced himself as Isaac Rasmussen and grinned mischievously when Skittery asked if he and Snitch were twins. Isaac's cryptic response left Skittery puzzled but intrigued. As they chatted and enjoyed dinner together, Skittery couldn't shake the feeling that Isaac was closely connected to Snitch. They shared laughs and stories, and Skittery found himself genuinely enjoying the evening. Their resemblance was uncanny, and Skittery's curiosity grew. He couldn't help but ask about their connection, but Isaac only replied, You have until the end of the evening to figure it out. As they headed to the movie theater, Isaac's phone rang in the middle of a conversation. He spoke in Navajo and explained that Jack had a habit of checking up on him, believing himself to be Isaac's older brother, even though they were born just three weeks apart. The movie went well, and Skittery was having a great time with Isaac. However, a nagging feeling continued to bother him. He wanted to know why Isaac looked so much like Snitch, but he couldn't bring himself to ask. Isaac seemed to sense Skittery's frustration. You haven't figured it out yet? He asked, a smirk playing on his lips. Skittery's mind raced, trying to connect the dots, but the answer remained elusive. The mystery surrounding Snitch and Isaac deepened, leaving Skittery both intrigued and perplexed as the evening continued. The revelation hit Skittery like a bolt of lightning. As Isaac casually commented on his acting skills and then seamlessly transitioned back into Snitch's voice, everything fell into place. The pieces of the puzzle finally connected, and Skittery realized the truth. You hear Snitch. Skittery stammered, his disbelief evident. Isaac nodded, a worried expression spreading across his face. Yes, it's me. Please don't freak out on me, Isaac pleaded. Skittery's legs felt weak as the shock of the revelation washed over him. He struggled to comprehend what he had just learned. How? He managed to ask, his voice trembling. It was a bet, Isaac explained. I bet some of the guys back at home that I couldn't spend the school year pretending I was a girl. Luckily, I managed to convince them that I could do it just for the school day. If I had to do it constantly, I'd probably go mad. Skittery took a moment to process this information. It all made sense now. The reason Snitch had turned down other guys and her mysterious behavior. She had been living a double life, one as Snitch, and the other as Isaac. So the reason you said no as a girl is. Skittery began, seeking clarification. Isaac nodded, his eyes filled with sincerity. I didn't want to go out with you in a lie. I wanted to date you as myself. 
please don't be mad. Skittery realized that Isaac's explanation was reasonable, even though it had taken him by surprise. He took a deep breath and reassured Isaac, I'm not mad, I'm just surprised that's all. A sense of relief washed over Isaac and he asked shyly, can I kiss you? Skittery smiled, the tension of the moment dissipating. Of course, he replied, leaning in to share a sweet and genuine kiss with the person who had hidden behind the persona of Snitch. Their high school journey had taken an unexpected turn, revealing the complexities of identity and the power of honesty. Skittery and Isaac's connection had deepened, and they were ready to navigate the challenges and surprises that lay ahead together. As the last bell of the school year rang, Snitch and Skittery looked forward to the evening's party, where Snitch planned to reveal the truth about his identity to their friends. Hey Snitch, when are you going to tell the guys the truth? David asked, gathering his books. At the party tonight, Snitch replied, a smirk playing on his lips. Skits is pretty excited, because he didn't really like hiding us. Also, the guys are coming up to see I made it. Snitch's transformation from Snitch to Isaac had become smoother over the year, and their friends had come to accept that they were simply close friends. Hey Skits, ready for tonight? Snitch asked, relaxing into Skittery's embrace. Yeah. I really can't wait but I'm a little nervous about meeting your friends. Are they all as overprotective as Jack? Skittery said, a loving smile on his lips. Before Snitch could answer, the intercom crackled to life with a message in Navajo. Snitch turned red, and Jack couldn't contain his laughter. I'll kill them, Snitch hissed, dropping his girl's voice and making his way to the office. What was the message? Skittery asked, hurrying to catch up to his boyfriend. It's not an exact translation, but they basically told me to come up to the office because they are too weak from pining after me. Also, they said they'd make sure whoever I'm seeing is right for me. There's more, but it's the usual big brother teasing little. Snitch trailed off, noticing the others. Skittery grinned, loving the playful banter between Snitch and Jack. He couldn't wait to meet Snitch's other friends. Snitch, lost in his irritation over the message, didn't pay attention to where he was walking and bumped into a familiar face. Hey, watch where you're, Snitchy. The boy, who looked distinctly Native American with light brown skin and black hair in a ponytail, said, Justin? Snitch asked shocked, it is you. Justin said with a wide smile, wow, and Ryan thought that we'd have to find you. Tears filled Snitch's eyes as he hugged Justin, and Skittery couldn't help but smile at the heartfelt reunion. Justin, Jack called, running over with a broad grin. Snitchy told me you went here, but I didn't believe her. I don't see why not, I'm perfectly honest, Snitch pouted playfully. Justin, two more voices chimed in as two boys appeared, capturing the attention of everyone present. Ryan, Luke, Snitch squealed, still maintaining his girl's persona. Snitch, the three friends barely had time to brace themselves before Snitch threw himself at them. Skittery watched with amusement as the five friends were reunited, especially noting the startled looks that Ryan and Luke gave Jack before embracing him. Wow, I never thought I'd see this day, David murmured. Hum, Skittery asked, Jack's crying. I guess he hasn't seen those three in a long time, David explained, and indeed tears were flowing down all five boys' cheeks, a heartwarming sight. Skits come here, Snitch said. Guys, this is Skittery. Skits, these are the three idiots who... Dot you know. Skittery smiled warmly as he shook their hands. Nice to meet you guys, finally. Snitch has told me all about you. Not all bad, I hope, Luke commented. Of course not, Skittery replied, stepping back to let David and the others introduce themselves. That night, everyone gathered at Jack's house to celebrate the last day of school. Luke quickly hit it off with Racetrack, engaging in random bets and starting discussions that amused Spot and Ryan. I swear it's like Luke's found his long-lost twin, Justin commented wryly. Oh dear, we've created a monster, Snitch said, groaning before standing up to make an announcement. Yo, everyone, I have two announcements, Snitch yelled, and Jake in charge of the music turned it down. Feeling everyone's eyes on him, Snitch nearly backed down, but Skittery holding his hand, provided the support he needed. First off, Snitch began, Skittery and I are dating. A mix of confusion and surprise spread among their friends as they processed this revelation. The atmosphere in the room crackled with anticipation, as Snitch was about to share an even bigger secret with the people he cared about most. He is, Snitch said, dropping his girl's voice. I'm actually a boy. He turned to Justin, Ryan, and Luke, triumphantly declaring, I won, pay up. With that, he kissed Skittery on the lips, and the room erupted in a mix of laughter, cheers, and good-natured grumbling from their friends. Just remember, thoughts are like arrows. Once released, they strike their mark. Guard them well, or one day you may be your own victim. 
Ryan said solemnly, reaching into his pocket and handing Snitch a check. Snitch nodded, appreciating the wisdom in Ryan's words. As the night continued, the party was filled with laughter, stories, and celebrations. Snitch, now openly as Isaac, introduced his childhood friends to their high school friends, creating new bonds among the group. The revelry carried on late into the night, marking the end of their high school journey and the beginning of new adventures. Isaac, Skittery, and their friends cherished their final summer before college, creating memories that would last a lifetime. They went on road trips, explored hidden hiking trails, and enjoyed countless movie nights under the stars. The bond between Isaac and Skittery grew stronger with each passing day, as did their friendships with Justin, Ryan, and Luke. As the summer came to an end, it was time to bid farewell to their hometown and embark on their college adventures. Isaac and Skittery attended the same university, sharing a dorm room that quickly became a hub for their friends to gather and reminisce about their high school days. Isaac's charm and charisma continued to shine, making him a popular figure on campus. He joined the theater club, honing his acting skills even further and surprising everyone with his incredible talent. Skittery, pursuing his passion for literature, found himself engrossed in his studies and often turned to Isaac for inspiration. Their relationship flourished, filled with shared dreams and aspirations. Late night conversations about life, love, and the future became a cherished routine. And through it all, Isaac's witty humor and Skittery's gentle demeanor brought balance and laughter to their days. One day, while browsing the university's bulletin board, Isaac stumbled upon a poster for a talent show. He grinned mischievously and turned to Skittery. What do you think, Skits? Shall we grace the stage with our talents? Skittery hesitated for a moment, but then smiled. Why not? It could be fun. Isaac immediately got to work, crafting a mesmerizing act that combined his acting prowess and Skittery's love for storytelling. The night of the talent show arrived, and the auditorium was buzzing with excitement. As Isaac and Skittery took the stage, a hushed anticipation filled the room. Isaac began reciting a captivating story, drawing the audience into a world of wonder and enchantment. Skittery's expressive narration wove seamlessly with Isaac's acting, creating a performance that left the audience spellbound. Applause erupted as they finished their act, and they took their final bow, hand in hand, sharing a proud and tender moment on stage. Their performance not only earned them a standing ovation, but also caught the eye of a talent scout in the audience. Impressed by their chemistry and talent, the scout offered them an opportunity to audition for a prestigious theater company. Isaac and Skittery faced the auditions with determination, supporting each other every step of the way. Their dedication paid off, and they secured roles in the theater company, embarking on a journey that would take them to stages around the world. Their love story continued to unfold, filled with the magic of the theater, the beauty of literature, and the enduring bond they shared. Together, they showed the world that love knows no boundaries, and that the greatest stories are the ones we create with the people we cherish. Isaac and Skittery's theatrical careers soared as they traveled from one city to another, performing in renowned theaters and earning acclaim for their exceptional talent. Their love story continued to blossom, a beacon of warmth and devotion amid the demanding world of the stage. In one bustling city, during a performance of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, an unexpected encounter changed their lives. After the show, as they mingled with the audience, a striking woman named Evelyn approached them. Her presence exuded an air of mystery and allure. Evelyn was a seasoned actress known for her enigmatic performances and her penchant for playing unconventional roles. She had seen Isaac and Skittery's performance and was deeply moved by their chemistry and artistry on stage. Bravo, she exclaimed, her voice like a siren song. Your performance tonight was truly remarkable. The way you two complement each other is nothing short of magical. Isaac and Skittery were flattered and humbled by her praise. They engaged in a spirited conversation about the intricacies of acting, the power of storytelling, and the challenges of maintaining a relationship in the world of theater. As the night unfolded, Evelyn's charisma drew them further into her orbit. She invited them to join her for coffee the next day to discuss the possibility of collaborating on a new production. Isaac and Skittery accepted the invitation, intrigued by the opportunity to work with such a talented and charismatic actress. Their meeting with Evelyn the next day led to an exciting collaboration on a contemporary play that explored themes of love, desire, 
and identity. Rehearsals were intense, and the chemistry between the three of them was undeniable, both on and off the stage. As they delved deeper into their roles, Isaac and Skittery found themselves captivated not only by Evelyn's acting prowess, but also by her enigmatic personality. Evelyn, in turn, was drawn to the genuine love and connection between Isaac and Skittery. The lines between their professional and personal lives began to blur. Late-night rehearsals turned into intimate dinners, and stolen glances on stage became lingering touches backstage. A complex web of emotions wove its way into their hearts, challenging the boundaries of love and desire. Caught in this romantic triangle, Isaac and Skittery grappled with their feelings for Evelyn and each other. The stage, once a place of comfort and creativity, became a battleground of emotions. They were torn between their deep, enduring love for each other and the undeniable chemistry they shared with Evelyn. As the opening night of their play approached, tensions ran high. The backstage whispers hinted at the brewing romance, adding an extra layer of intrigue to the already highly anticipated production. Audiences were drawn to the passionate performances, unaware of the emotions simmering beneath the surface. The night of the premiere arrived, and the play unfolded with an intensity that left the audience spellbound. The final act, a heart-wrenching confrontation between the three characters, brought tears to the eyes of many. As the curtain fell, Isaac, Skittery, and Evelyn stood together, taking their bow. The applause was thunderous, but in the midst of the adulation, they shared a knowing glance, aware that their lives had become intertwined in ways they could never have predicted. The captivating love triangle had taken center stage, leaving both the audience and the actors themselves wondering what the future held for this complicated, passionate relationship. As the final curtain call echoed through the theater, Isaac, Skittery, and Evelyn found themselves in the backstage chaos, the roar of the crowd still ringing in their ears. Applause and cheers filled the air, but their hearts were heavy with the unspoken emotions that had built up during their collaboration. Evelyn was the first to break the silence. She turned to Isaac and Skittery, her eyes filled with a mix of admiration and sadness. You two, she began, you have a connection that's truly extraordinary. It was an honor to share the stage with you. Skittery nodded, his voice trembling slightly as he replied, Evelyn, you've brought a new dimension to our performances. We couldn't have asked for a better collaborator. Isaac, torn between the love he felt for both Skittery and Evelyn, struggled to find the right words. I, I care deeply for both of you, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. This journey has been unlike anything I've ever experienced. Evelyn's gaze softened, and she reached out to touch Isaac's cheek. And I too have found myself drawn to both of you, she confessed. But I see the love you share, and I don't want to come between that. Skittery, sensing the weight of the moment, stepped forward. We need to talk, the three of us, he said, looking from Isaac to Evelyn and back. There are feelings that can't be ignored, but we must find a way forward that respects the bonds we formed. They agreed to meet later that evening, after the theater had emptied and the stage was bathed in soft, solitary light. As they gathered in the quiet of the empty auditorium, their hearts laid bare, they embarked on a candid conversation. Isaac confessed his love for both Skittery and Evelyn, torn between his deep connection with Skittery and the magnetic pull he felt towards Evelyn. Skittery, in turn, acknowledged the undeniable chemistry between Isaac and Evelyn, but expressed his unwavering love for Isaac. Evelyn, with her characteristic wisdom and grace, revealed her own complex feelings, acknowledging the uniqueness of the relationship she had with each of them. Together, they confronted the complexities of love, desire, and the intricacies of the human heart. They decided that it was essential to preserve the genuine love and connection they shared. They would continue to collaborate professionally, but embrace their friendship without expectations or restrictions. Their decision brought both relief and a sense of closure. The trio left the theater that night with a newfound understanding of the depths of their feelings and the importance of nurturing the bonds they had formed. Love, they realized, was not always straightforward, but it could be beautiful in its complexity. In the years that followed, Isaac and Skittery continued to captivate audiences with their performances, while Evelyn continued to astonish with her enigmatic roles. They remained dear friends, 
cherishing the unique connection they shared and the lessons they had learned about love's many facets. Their story became legendary in the theater world, a tale of passion, artistry, and the enduring power of genuine human connection. It served as a reminder that love, in all its forms, could be both heartbreaking and magnificent, a force that could transcend boundaries and redefine relationships. And so their journey continued, filled with the promise of new adventures, new roles, and the ever-present knowledge that the bonds of their unconventional love would endure, like a timeless masterpiece on the stage of life.